All right, folks, welcome aboard. It is Friday, and that means that this is the last show of the week. But we have a huge game coming up this week uh, against the Denver Broncos. Again, like we've been talking about all week, this game doesn't have as much significance as it probably would were we still trying to get into the playoffs. In the past, um, you know, it's it's been all the way to week 17 to try to figure out if we could even get in. You remember the Hugh Jackson debacle um, and, you know, certain certain other seasons where it was it would come down to some other team having to lose and we had to win. Well, in this case, folks, we don't have to do that. We're already in. We've been in now. Uh, with the win uh, over the Colts. So we're, we're secured. We're good to go. Uh, now we have to wrap up the season. Again, some unfortunate things that we're going to go ahead and talk about uh, today. Um, not going to get so much into the fact that Derek Carr could come back. I still believe that he can. Information keeps coming out every single day. We had some new information today. Um, no ligament damage, no meniscus damage, bone already healing. Uh, you are going to have to reevaluate the time that it is going to take for Derek Carr to come back. It looks more like three weeks um, as opposed to six. But again, who knows? Um, Michael Crabtree made the emergency quarterback. Why wouldn't you bring in another quarterback if you don't? Basically, you're going to have uh, Matt McGloin and a guy that was pretty much inactive for 10 weeks as your two quarterbacks moving into the playoffs. You could bring in somebody right now. You could start getting them reps right now, particularly if we win and you have the the off week to get somebody up to speed, hand off the ball, throw a couple of simple patterns uh, to the wide receivers. Um, so again, those things are out there and I, and I've been talking about it all week. I've been getting a lot of flack. A lot of people have been saying, no, 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 put them on injured reserve, shelf them, come back next year. I don't want to come back next year. I don't want to wait, uh, another 16 games. Who knows if he doesn't get injured in week eight, you know, next year or, or whatever it is. No, I, I, I want us to win. I want us to win now. Um, with that being said, I want to bring on our guest for today. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, you guys all know who this guy is. Uh, he is the guy that we call the closer, uh, Mr. Watts Raider. Watts, what's going on, brother man? What's going on, Pirate? Much love to the Raider Nation, man. Shout out to everybody. Shout out to the Oakland Knight, too, man. Appreciate you for coming on uh, the other day. Yeah, absolutely, man. So, uh, so we were talking earlier today uh, about what it was like during that game, and I know you came on uh, on the after show. We talked a little bit about it. Now that the dust has kind of settled, uh, take us take us through what was going on in your mind. You know, watching that game, and then when what happened with Derek Carr, and then leading up and uh, up until this point right now, what's your thought process? Okay, okay. Well, um, I just want to say, first of all, man, in that Colts game, man, the Raiders, the whole Raiders team, man, they played their best game of the season, man. And and, and everything that I, I was talking about in the preseason and, and throughout the weeks uh, prior to this game about what the Raiders could do on uh, with the running game and, and uh, how the defense was getting better, they showed that in the coast game, you know, before DC got hurt, man. So we were all just on a, a, a high, you know, and we were really, we were really enjoying watching this team just, just blossom in one game. And we, I started to think like we're playing a complete football game right now and, and it's looking real good, but you know, uh, things happen, man. And, and, and really when Carr got hurt, I saw the replay cause I was looking down at my phone and I looked up, and when I looked up, I saw Carl on the ground, and he was crying. Basically, this was after he said it was broken. This is when he was laying out on the on the field. And when I looked up and saw that man, and, and I noticed that the whole stadium just went quiet. I just thought I just thought about every Raider fan that I knew, man, and 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 I just felt the pain. And then then when I looked at Jack Del Rio's face, I knew it was bad. Like I knew it was way worse than the finger. You know, so, you know, he got hurt and, uh, you know, it's just one of those unfortunate things. And, 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 and I was mad. I was pissed. I made a video, you know, cause I was listening to Papa on the radio and he was, he was like, yeah, broken fibula. And I just kind of lost it for a minute, you know, 
But uh, the dust had to settle for a couple of days, man. And, uh, you know, I just had to get behind Matt McGloin, man. You know, we just have to get behind Matt. And, and he's been there for three, four years, man. He, he's, he's pretty much a vet. Uh, you know, he hasn't played that much because of Derek Carr, but uh, he knows all the plays. You know, he has a way better team around him now. And uh, I just think that the de- if the defense steps up and the running game continues to flow, Matt McGloin will be just fine. So um, right now at this point, we, we, we know that the injury is not as severe. So if we can just make it to the AFC Championship, it's a possibility that Derek Carr will suit up for that game. So um, I think that's one reason why they haven't put him on IR, and they're not going to do it because they know that he has the will to want to play, and Jack Garrido is not going to stop him from playing if he's healthy enough to play. So let's just, you know, keep praying, and hopefully we can get there and maybe Clark can come back and play. Yeah, absolutely. Um, You know, I've said the same thing. You know, right now – you know, there is a lot of evidence that Derek Carr can come back. And, and again, like I said, a lot of people are saying, put him on the shelf, let him heal up, let him do this, let him do that. Right now, McGloin is the focus. Right now, McGloin is the guy. He's getting a lot of airtime. Uh, probably two weeks ago, if you typed in Matt McGloin into the Internet, you'd get six or seven different pictures of him from certain different games. Um, now you type in Matt McGloin and, and there's just pictures of him from everywhere. I mean, he's just getting a ton of publicity. This is a guy that walked on to a Penn State program. Um, this is a guy that didn't get invited to the combine. This is a guy that came in as a free agent with the Raiders and beat out a very high-priced quarterback and a fourth-round draft pick. Teams don't usually cut – a, a draft pick quarterback in favor of an undrafted guy. And now exactly. here he is, and he's he's at the wheel of, like you said the other day, which I thought was a uh, a really a really nice um, comparison. It is not a Corvette. It's a Rolls Royce. This is a finely tuned luxury machine. Exactly. It's big, it's strong, it's powerful, but it's not just built to boat race and to do all those types of things. If you drive this thing right, uh, you'll get there in style. And so right. once again, talk a little bit about Matt McGloin. Give me a little bit of what your thought process is with McGloin. What are some of the things that he can do? What are some of the things you think this team is going to do uh, in order to make sure that um, we we can come out with this victory? Okay, well, well, well. first of all about Matt, man, you know, he's a fiery guy, man. He's, he's, not, a, he's, not, a, he's not a soft guy. You know, um, he he wants to make plays. You know, he, he wants to make plays. He wants to contribute, man. All his teammates believe in him, though. They really do. They really do. And, um, it, I mean, by the Raiders sticking with him, you know, uh, keeping him on the roster, they they know something that that we don't know. I mean, I mean, we, we think we know Matt McGowan, but they know something that we don't know. And hopefully that he has the killer instinct now that he has a better team around him, you know, and he know he he knows he can go out there and make plays, and and, and I just think his mentality is going to help him a lot. But the one thing about Matt that I hope that he he's, he's doing in practice and that will make him successful is playing with progression. If he can play with progression. He doesn't have to beat Derek Carr. But if he can play with progression as far as on his throws, he can make better throws, and and the playmakers are going to be able to go make plays. So as long as he's not throwing it too much in the double coverage or triple coverage, I'm good with that. As long as he's not going with the first read every time, I'm good with that. So I think that's the most important thing. He has to use progression, man, because defenses are going to be trying to blitz. They're going to try to confuse him, and he's just going to have to get the ball out quick. So, uh, yeah, progression is the number one thing I think, Matt, we want to see from Matt in this game here versus the Broncos. If he can, if he can hit at least eight to ten different receivers, we'll be just fine. We'll be just fine. Yeah, I think that that's a good point that we have going for us. I was watching Inside the NFL. I watched Phil Simms talk about how Jeff Hostetler came in and backed him up. Um, Right, I saw that. Yeah, 
But he didn't give Matt McGloin any credit. He said, oh, Hostetler was a much better quarterback. Right. What are you talking right. about? Jeff Hostetler right. was a third-string quarterback exactly. who was uh, 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 holding snaps, was going to retire because he couldn't get any playing time. Matt McGloin is right. a guy that's the, uh, the second-string quarterback. Um, right. How can you say that Hostetler was better when we don't have very much information, particularly with a good football team around him? When we look at a football team like the Dallas Cowboys, people talk about it all the time. If you went ahead and you took a mediocre quarterback – uh, let's say that you went and and uh, and you took the guy. What's the guy from uh, Bradford? You take Sam Bradford. You put <laughs> Sam Bradford behind that Dallas Cowboy offensive line with that running game with those receivers. They're probably a much different. He's probably a candidate for MVP. You got Dak Prescott back there right now. He's a rookie. This is a rookie. This is a guy that never played right. in the NFL before, right. and he's come in right. and he's done some things. So once again, right. there's a little bit of a difference. When right. you know, I, I just think it's really unfair. But, I, but, but, but I, I, I want to say, I want to say a point about Dallas. I want to say a point about mm -hmm. Dallas. Dallas has yep. a great offensive line. They have an excellent running back. They have excellent receivers, and they have an excellent coach who was a quarterback in the NFL. So, and he was a backup. So, the Dallas team, all they need is decent quarterback play. They have all the pieces in effect. Now, the Raiders, a little bit different. You know, Jack, Jack is a defensive-minded coach, but we have good quarterback coaches for the Raiders. Yep. So it's kind of a similar situation with the Raiders. I mean, okay, the da Dallas is still the same team. They're just minus Tony Romo. They're, they're pretty much the same team. So, um, and we have three – three running backs that can start on another team. So, I mean, we actually have more weapons than the Dallas Cowboys. More. Even the receiving core, we have more. So, Matt is really in a better position with the Raiders than Dak is with the Cowboys. But I give the Cowboys props. They win in games. You know, they win in games. No, absolutely. So, uh, Matt, absolutely. Matt, but, Matt is but, in a good but, position, like Matt. Right. And like we said, uh, like I just said, you take Sam Bradford, who's struggling in Philadelphia. You take some other quarterbacks who are probably struggling. You know, let's say, for example, Trevor Simeon, and you put him behind a big offensive line with a running game with wide receivers on the outside. Um you know, it might be a different story. So my point is, right. we don't know what we're going to get. We're not going to know what we're going to get until we see this Sunday. And we probably won't know even then because no. of the game plan, because they're going to try to protect him. And Come do on, you know how things. Musgrave is going to you know do it. He's going to play it safe. Exactly. He's going to play it real safe. <clears throat> exactly. Or he may play it extremely bizarre, like he's played some things in the past. Instead of running the ball, trying to throw the ball a lot, we're not exactly I sure. I mean, they might Listen, come with go to... <laughs> right. they no, we, we don't know. I mean, that's going to be the thing is we really we don't know at this point. So we're going to see come Sunday uh, exactly what we've got. Hey, listen, folks, we're going to go and, ahead and, and, and take look, a break. And one, and one more, one more, one more point, one more point. And yep. guess what? Guess what? We can run the ball dangerously out of the shotgun. We can run the ball with a right. delayed handoff out of the shotgun effectively. <laughs> oh, hey. Yeah, and that's we're, something we're, that and that's something that I think we're going to get into, you know, in the second half because that's something that was on my mind as well, the diversity of what this offense has been able to do. But right now we we've got to go out, we got to take a break real quick. We're going to go ahead cool, and cool. run this commercial. When we come back, we are going to pick up on this. And again, I think that's an important uh, thing to, to kind of put in here about the diversity of this offense and what it can and it can't do. So, folks, uh, go on ahead and enjoy this commercial, and we'll be right back on the other side.
All right, folks, welcome back from the break. Uh, once again, we're talking about the Raiders. We're talking about the offense. We're talking about Matt McGloin. Um, we're here with Watts Raider on the phone. Uh, and, you know, we're just kind of discussing before we went to the break, we talked a little bit about the Raiders, the offense, what it was that they could, what they should and probably shouldn't do, what they might be able to expect from Matt McGloin. But you brought up a really interesting point, And that point is that most teams run the ball out of the shotgun um, selectively. They basically, you know, you're looking at, third and 10 third and 15 you really don't want a negative play you don't want to fumble uh or something of that nature you know that the defense is going to be rushing you they're going to be blitzing and you're hoping pretty much that they over pursue they go wide it opens up the middle of the field it allows you to get those interior linemen like Gabe Jackson and Rodney Hudson out on some linebackers and you might be able to have a big play. You might be able to get a big play, pick up 10 yards or, you know, 15 yards. But generally speaking, most times it doesn't turn out to be an explosive, you know, 50-yard run. The Raiders, on the other hand, uh, have made a habit of running just on first down, on second down. It, it's it's just sort of one of their staple runs uh, that they do. And they've been very effective with it. Now, that forces you to have to kind of play them honest. In most football teams, you don't have to play them honest. You can just kind of sit back. You know what they're going to do. It's third and long. They're probably going to try to run the draw play, and you can kind of make your decision from there. But again, like I said, this offense forces you to defend the entire field. They're going to throw the quick screen. They're going to throw the comebacks. They're going to throw the circle routes to the halfbacks. They're going to run the draw plays on first down and second down when you're really not expecting them to do it. You've got to be aware of where these running backs are at all times. And and also, they've gotten really good at being able to do it. They've gotten really good at being able to run out of the shotgun because of the um, the finger injury with Derek Carr. And that means that this offense is going to be much more dynamic, you know, in, in my opinion. Um, so coming into this, I mean, do you think that they're going to, um, you know, be able to be effective doing that, being able, uh, you know, will it be more under center or do you see that they will, um, you know, choose to try to keep McGloin back there and, uh, and continue to, tr to try to run out of that shotgun? Well, okay. Well, in, in the shotgun, you know, I mean, we, we've had to play like that. So, uh, you know, we've really been practicing on those plays in practice, and the line really just knows where to push the defense. So, basically, you can be very dangerous with, with, the, with just that type of play. Just with the delayed handoff and, and running out of the shotgun, you can be dangerous because you can bring play action in. You can do the rollouts. You can do the underneath routes with the running backs. You can fake the run through the underneath. You know, you can attack the middle of the field. And when you do plays like delayed handoffs, you freeze the defense. You freeze the linebackers. You make them think. When you make them think, that's when they make mistakes. So it's, 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 it's this something that we need to use. Basically, we need to take a page out of, out of this one team's playbook that has beaten us the last two years in a row. And that team is the Kansas City Chiefs. If you watch their play calling, we can run every play that they run because we have the personnel. We have tight ends that can get out in space, but we have to run the correct screen play. We can't run a wide receiver screen. We have to run a screen with the tight end. We can run those plays that they run with Kelsey. We can run those plays that they run with Tyreek Hill. We can try those plays, and then we can run from under center. We can go power. You know, we can go five wide receivers. We can do a lot of things now, you know, because McGloin is completely healthy. He's completely healthy. So I think that uh, we're, we're actually a bit of a more dangerous team as far as play calling now because our quarterback is fully healthy in the line. Just think about how many times we saw Derek Carr drop back to pass. Just think about how much time he had to throw the ball. He was throwing lobs, deep lob passes. So Matt McGloin is going to have just as much time as Derek Carr did. So I don't understand why people are – 
Other fans are saying Matt McGloin is not going to be effective. He's going to have the same offensive line, and he's going to have the same time to throw the ball. So that's going to help. So I just think we're in a good spot, man, and we just need to take advantage of this situation. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, it's, it is it is kind of interesting. You know, that leads kind of into the defense. It, now, the first five weeks of the season, this was a historically bad defense. And, and we've kind of gone over, you know, why that was, again, trying to run the Seattle defense personnel philosophy probably wasn't the same there's only been one team that's been able to run that defense effectively and that is Seattle again Jacksonville struggled with it they got their head coach fired behind it uh the only reason why Atlanta's not getting fired is because their offense is doing so well that's more Shanahan the offensive coordinator than it is what they're doing defensively they do not have a very good defense there um in Atlanta again the same type of defense uh, and here we we mightily struggled the first five weeks of the season. But once we sort of made that transition, you'll notice the last five weeks of the season, this defense has really stepped it up. They're creating a lot of turnovers. They're not allowing any points in the fourth quarter. Yeah. Um, so looking at it, now we get to this point where we say, can this defense, is this defense in a position where they might be able to win a game for us, win a couple of games for us? Going into the playoffs, everybody talks about Miami having a great defense, Houston having a great defense, the Patriots having a good defense. Right now, it's pretty much the Raiders and the Steelers that have kind of the shaky defenses, good offenses, shaky defenses. But... You know, looking back, the Tennessee game, uh, I think Derek Carr had under 200 yards. Um, the Jacksonville game, he struggled. Uh, and even in the Baltimore game, I think he had 250 yards or something in the Baltimore game, a touchdown and an interception. But the bottom line was, um, you know, the, he, he struggled against some of these teams. You know, he seemed to be off, particularly against those teams in that division. Now, my question, again, is in those games, the defense came up, special teams came up. We were able, you know, Janikowski put some points on the board. We were able to take the ball away uh, in those games. Is this defense at this point, have we reached a point where we can lean on this defense, you know, for a game or two? Again, going back, first five games of the season, historically one of the worst defenses. Last five games, if you take away what happened in Carolina when Derek Carr had the finger issue uh, and Carolina was able to rage back and you take away what Andrew Luck did, in that fourth quarter um, where he was able to rage back this, this uh, defense has played fantastically in my opinion, have they moved up to the middle of the pack and can they uh, be effective in terms of leaning on this defense with this young unproven quarterback at this point? Yes, we can. Yes, we can. Because it's like we just think about the games, man, we've come back to win most of a lot of our games. So we done got down early. And uh, that really says that the offense, it was clicking, but it wasn't clicking, clicking. It didn't, it didn't click into the second half of games. But the defense basically got three and outs, turnovers, made stops, and gave Derek Carr those opportunities to win us those games. So this defense gives up a lot of yards. But think about this. We have Mario Edwards Jr. back in that middle. So what we're going to do is we're basically going to put pressure up that middle now, and, and, and Khalil Mack and Bruce Irvin are going to have a field day. So that's going to mean that we're going to have chances to get more turnovers, get the ball back in good field position, and that's going to help the offense. Because the offense has had a lot of help from the defense. I mean – uh, so I mean, we can do. We we can. We're basically gonna play a, a, a basic style of defense versus every team like we've been doing, but we've still been able to to get turnovers and get the ball back. So this this Raider defense doesn't have to dial up blitzes and do all kind of different things because we have playmakers on that line. So uh, that's really the main thing that I think is that that how we can beat every team is our defensive line, man. Like they don't stop playing to the to the end to the last snap 
So we, we're we always in the game, you know. So, uh, I mean, the defense has got much better, Pirate, man. You know, we talked a lot about the defense in the preseason and, you know, Falcons game and all those games. And we, we've seen this defense come together, man, really. And, and think about it. We, we're not getting any more penalties on defense. Why? Because D.J. Hayden is hurt. So that shows our defense is really st- is really pretty much disciplined. They're disciplined. So um, we're we're good, man. We're we're good on defense, man. We can stop. We can stop teams. We might give up some yards, a big play here or there, but we can stop. We can stop teams. Well, you know that leads me to another question, and that is, can Khalil Mack kind of turn it on at this point? You know, we talked about the defense, we talked about the turnovers, pressure from Mack, pressure from Irvin. Now we've got Mario Edwards Jr. back. Um, can Mack kind of turn it on? Eleven sacks on the season right now, so he's gone over double digits again. But it's really the pressures. I mean, he leads the league right now in terms of pressures. He's not getting all of the sacks that he probably could be getting. But 11 sacks is still pretty good. He's tied with Kerrigan at this point uh, with 11 sacks. I think it's like seventh in in the NFL right now. But again, the pressure, what he's doing, how he's applying the pressure, he's he's close. If we go back and you look at the, the last two games that we've played against the Denver Broncos, a five sack game. And then I think it was a two sack game. Um, So that's seven sacks. The last two times that we've played the Broncos, if Khalil Mack can get two, three sacks, that's going to get him up there. 13, 14, maybe 15 sacks on the season with the amount of pressure. I think he locks in the MVP at that point. Uh, you know, a lot of people are saying he's, you know, well, he's good. He's this, he's that, but you know, he's not as good as the Von Miller. He's not as good as he's, can he turn it on and can he, you know, uh, do something special for this football team? I mean, that's going to be the question. That's, that's, that's the thing that we're going to have to look at and say, without Derek Carr, without our offensive MVP, we still have our potential defensive MVP. And again, you know, this is the funny thing. People uh, are saying we don't have a chance. You know, there's no way that we're going to be able to get anything done. We have an offensive MVP candidate and we have a defensive MVP candidate. Not a lot of people are talking about it, but we have a coach of the year uh, candidate at this point. One of the best offensive lines in all of football. Uh, And again, a defense that has done a fantastic job, not of necessarily being dominant in terms of not allowing yards or being number one against the run or uh, any of those types of things. But in terms of their takeaways, they're giving up yards, but they're taking the ball away. Up until this point, the offense has been uh, very sound. You know, Derek Carr has still had an MVP type of campaign, but not turning over the ball, I think, you know, once again, has really been huge. So at this point, you you begin to 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 say, OK, so they're missing the quarterback, but they still have all of the weapons. Amari Cooper, Michael Crabtree, the tight ends, the running backs, the offensive line, Khalil Mack, Bruce Irvin, a secondary that is that is taking the ball away, right? Uh, we're, we're getting forced fumbles. We're getting interceptions. I, I still think that this is a very, very dangerous team. And again, word came down. They're not going to allow um, Alden Smith back this year. I said it before. Alden Smith won't be back this year. And I said Derek Carr will be back this year. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to stick to that. Uh, so once again, you know, we're going to have to wrap the show, having some camera issues here, having to switch over to two, uh, different cameras, but I appreciate, uh, I appreciate you coming on Watts. Do you have any, uh, parting words for the Raider nation at this point? Yeah. Yeah. I appreciate you once again, pirate, man. Uh, everybody go check me out on YouTube. Watch Raider. Uh, go check me out on Instagram. It's uh watch Raider, all one word, all lowercase, uh, also on Facebook. Watch Raider. So um, just check me out, man. Uh, show your boy some love and support, man, because, you know, win, lose, or tie, Raiders till I die. And uh, I, I just want the Raiders to have a good game. We need to win this. And we need to be rooting for the Miami Dolphins, y'all, because if, be, if they beat New England and we win, we got the number one seed. So, hey, we got a lot of chips on our shoulders, man. So let's just stay strong. Let's get behind that. Let's get him pumped up. Let's get him, you know, hey, we need him to be the scram scrapper out there, man. (laughs) You know, and I think, look, if we get to that bye, I think 
DC is going to be in the press box with Musgrave in the skybox at least. I wouldn't want him on the field because, hey, he might, somebody might run into him. But we, we want him to come to the stadium for that first playoff game, and I know he's going to be there, and that's going to bring so much so much support to, to Matt and the whole team and the whole fan base. So I just hope it works out like that, man, because a man like Derek Carr, man, you can't keep him away too long. So much love to everybody, man, and Red Nation for life. All right. Fantastic, man. Well, once again, appreciate you coming on, brother, man. Anytime. You know, I'd love to have you on. Love talking with you. Uh, well, folks, that's going to okay. do it uh, for today's show. Again, we're going to see what is going to happen. I'll have the halftime report up. We obviously will be here uh, after the game talking to you guys, hearing what you guys have to say. I think I think we're all excited at this point. We're going to see what Matt McGloin has. He's got a full game. He's not going to be pulled. Nobody's going to come trotting onto the field um, you know, to pull him out. He's, he's going to have an opportunity to get in there. Um, if, he just, if he just plays within the system, and, and, and that's the thing just play within the system you know let the plays come in lean on the running game lean on that big offensive line in front of you they're they're going to be upset right now uh you know hit the throws that are open don't try to do too much allow your defense to get you some good field position and uh hopefully they play well keep denver out of the end zone uh and i think it's it's going to be it's going to be fine we're going to get out of this game we're going to have the bye week and i really really do believe once again that um D uh, Derek carr is either the emergency quarterback uh in that game or he is the starting quarterback in the championship game if we are fortunate enough to get that far which i think i think we are i, I this season is not over i've said it before this team has learned to win in a lot of different ways it's going to have to win with a backup quarterback we've learned to win with defense we've learned to win with offense we've learned to win running the ball we've learned to win passing the ball for over 500 yards running the ball down Denver's throat, um, special teams. I mean, we've learned to win coming from behind. We learned to win being up as a front runner. And now it's going to be learning to win with a backup quarterback. This is a special team. This is still a special season. I've heard so many people talk about, you know, oh, the season is over. And I get it. You know, as a as a pontificator, one of those guys that's on the legacy media, if you're on, you know, NFL Live or NFL Network, ESPN, whatever it is, I mean, obviously you're going to sit there and say, hey, you know what, the New England Patriots are, or the Pittsburgh Steelers are going to be there because their quarterbacks have experience. Who cares? Who cares if they have experience? There are quarterbacks that have gone in there without experience. There are teams that have gone in there without experience and won the entire thing. So, again, it's, it's a bit of tunnel vision. These guys tend to have tunnel vision. Um, they would like nothing more than for, you know, Matt McGloin to have a terrible outing uh, and the Raiders to be demoralized, have to go on the road, and, and, and to be beat, you know, to be beat somewhere. Uh, and knocked out for this particular year. Everybody knows this is the most dangerous football team in the National Football League right now. And they believe that you have to have Derek Carr for this to be that dangerous team. So this is a challenge to the rest of those guys. Is this team Derek Carr? Or is this team all of the blood, the sweat, and the tears that you guys have put in from the very beginning of the season? The belief, the heart, the brotherhood. You don't just... You don't just you know, uh, and, and, and we've seen it. This, this is, this is the thing that, that the night and I, you know, spoke about. We've seen this team deflate. Like I've never seen a team deflate before. I mean, we've seen, you know, so it's, it's, it's good that that is out of the way for right now, because that can't happen in a playoff game. I mean, you gotta, they've got to look at themselves and say two times in a row, this has happened. Twice this has happened in the Carolina game uh, and, you know, again, in the Colt game where it was everyone, stadium, training staff, security guards, photographers not taking pictures. They're, uh, you know, everybody's just like they don't know what the hell to do. So they've got to get past that. When you're in the playoffs, if something's not going your way, you got to continue to fight no matter what. So once again, we've had two opportunities. Hopefully they can learn from that so that any type of disparity that we encounter in the playoffs, we can continue to play through. 
And I believe this team will. I believe this team will step up. I believe Amari Cooper is going to come up big. Um, and, you know, the playmakers on this football team are going to come up big. This is an angry, angry offensive line. Five angry men, maybe six when they bring in Kirkland or somebody else. This is an angry group. And, you know, they just got to get out there and they got to get us to, uh, they got to get us this victory. Give us some time to heal. They know they know what's at stake. If we're out here guessing, if we're out here coming up with our own ideas, this football team knows they're going to keep it under wraps because that's what it's all about. You don't set the chessboard to let everybody know exactly what you're going to do. You set the chessboard based on what you may be doing two, three steps down the road. Your pieces remain stationary. Your thought process, how you look at the moves and the things that you do, um, there, there may be some structure to that, but you're always leaving yourself a back door. You're always leaving yourself the ability to move to the left or move to the right. And I think this, that's what this football team is doing. But Donald Penn knows, Hudson knows, these guys know. They know exactly what's going on. They're not going to say a word, just like Jack Del Rio is not going to say a word. But I believe 100% that these guys know that Derek Carr is going to be back if they can just buy some time. This offensive line is going to dominate on Sunday. You heard it here first, folks. All right, guys. Um, thanks once again to the Watts Raider. Uh, always good uh, to talk with watts and uh if you guys do want to send something in the w2w at gmail.com once again that's the w2w at gmail.com you can also hit us up on twitter at the w2w on facebook at the w2w and also on gab.ai uh at the w2w at gab.ai or I think it's the W2W at Gab.ai. Uh, so once again, man, this is going to be exciting. It's it's going down for real. We will see what we will see come Sunday. And we will be here afterwards to talk about it. All right, guys. We'll see you soon.